Hello everybody and welcome back to another video here on Cobbler's Logs where today we've got another match to build up to. It's another opposition live. We're joined by a uh, Charlton fan, Tyler Rowlinson or Rowlinson, whichever way you say it. I should, probably should have clarified that before we got started. Um, but yeah, hello to Tyler. Welcome along. Uh, before we do get started, we've got a very special uh, giveaway kind of thing for you guys. Obviously, you know about our partners, FanHub. Uh, some of you have signed up for the app but haven't been able to get on it yet. But we've got a code for 10 of you uh, to join uh, FanHub and skip the sort of 1,000 plus queue there is a minute to get on the app. So that's going to appear at the bottom in just a moment. So the first 10 people that hit that code, uh, well, put that code into the app. Uh, we'll be able to skip the queue. It's going to come up at the bottom right now. As you can see that uh, the exclusive fan hub code is coming up now. We'll wait for it to scroll along. Uh, and it is, if it's ever going to get there, JK-247. So if you want to get yourself on fan hub, go and use that code. Um, but let's go on with it. The Cobblers um, take on Charlton tomorrow night. Um, hello to everybody that's here. George NTFC, Lucy Mayfair. Uh, we've got Michael, uh, who is a Charlton fan. Uh, Jason Rodhouse is here. So yeah, hello to everyone that's joined us. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, if you can hit the like button as well, that'd be absolutely fantastic. Tyler, uh, welcome along, mate. Uh, we're in lockdown. How are things going? How are you uh, doing yourself? Yeah, thanks for having me on. Um, yeah, I've been coping. I've been coping during lockdown, managing. I think that's the best way to put it. I think that's how everybody's uh, doing at the moment, to be honest, just getting through it. Um, hopefully be back to normal very soon, get back to a normal life and... Uh, yeah, just, just waiting for this bloody lockdown to win. Been in it for so long now. I just want to get out of it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I can't wait to, uh, to get back to normal, especially um, get back to stadiums. I mean, uh, yeah, of we saw the um, uh, the announcement today that the, the new EFL season will start on the uh, 7th of August. So hopefully both of us can kind of, and everybody else watching, can hopefully get in the ground for that one. Um, but we're here to obviously talk about tomorrow night. Um, we'll, we'll kind of zoom in a, a little bit more on that later. Um, but I want to talk about Charlton's season overall first. Talk us through how you've been getting on this season. You're obviously uh, up in ninth place, 48 points on the board, going for a promotion. I'll get your thoughts on whether or not you get promoted in, in a little bit. Um, but how has your season been so far overall? Well, uh, it's been a it's been a long one with a lot of emotions. I think obviously we came down from the championship last season. I think most people in League One on paper would be expecting us to go straight back up and fight for that position. It was never going to be easy from the start of the season. If you recall, we were under dire ownership at the time when the season first kick started. We only got it sorted out uh, in September uh, towards the end of the towards the end of the transfer window. So we had very limited time to put our squad together. Half of our squad left in the summer uh, due to contracts expiring, players wanting to leave. Um, so we basically just had to put our squad together with just sort of like free agents that were just left. It was a case of just bringing those players in or get no one essentially. But, you know, we, we had quite a, a slow start for the first couple of games. I remember against Crew, uh, Crew actually we won, uh, but Doncaster, Lincoln and uh, suffered defeats to those teams. I expected us to lose to those sides really because obviously the squad was just completely decimated after the summer. But then out of nowhere, uh, we went on a brilliant run after that. Eight game unbeaten run, six clean sheets in a row as well during that period. So we were high flying looking for top two and all of a sudden our expectations of not thinking we were going to go up then suddenly changed to we could be serious title contenders. And then come December, reality set it, settled in, really. Um, our squad showed its true colours. Um, some of the players just simply weren't good enough. Performances died off massively. Uh, manager's tactics, Lee Bowyer, was come under a lot of fire this season as well. Uh, tactically, he's got a lot of things wrong. Squad rotation constantly. Um, some, questionable, some questionable things said in press conferences as well. But yeah, I think after the Christmas period, it just really fell apart for us and we slid down the table january we tried to start the rebuild that we will have to do in the summer uh because we just got rid of deadwood players that just weren't working out players that had to go because they weren't good enough players we brought in in the summer went already and we definitely strengthened but the squad on paper you know on, on paper we've got one of the best teams in the league but it's just not it's just not really clicking for us at the moment and we find ourselves as you say currently ninth um, not in the best of form at the moment. One win in our last five home form, absolutely atrocious. But we're there's been, there's been some improvements results lately. Beat Wigan, uh, drew with Oxford last time out. Last minute penalty was saved, which was heart wrenching. Probably should have a uh, well should have scored that, but it was a brilliant save from the keeper. But results, you know, they're, they're, they're starting to pick up. The performance is still quite lacklustre. Football's quite abysmal for me, and honestly, are. But you know, we're, we're getting there eventually, slowly improving improving but overall i think it's been quite a quite a disappointing average season to be honest 
Yeah, fair enough. I mean, you, you said teams, for teams that usually go on a run usually end up getting promoted. And obviously you've kind of done both. You've gone on that good run and you've gone on that sort of poor run as well. Um, I just yep. want to pause for just a minute uh, because we have got some breaking news. I mean, this would normally be completely um, irrelevant uh, if it... Um, you know, if it was, you know, talking about the Oldham manager, but Oldham have just appointed Keith Kerr as their manager, uh, Lucy Mayfair. Oh, wow. Um, has just informed us in the chat. I've just uh, gone on the Oldham website to check. It has just been announced Keith Kerr is the new Oldham head coach, not manager. You know, there's all sort of different names for this these days. Um, just reading through, there's nothing really kind of there it says uh, Oldham Athletic are pleased to announce that Keith Curl uh, will be the cobblers will be the club's new head coach until the end of the season initially. So I guess it's probably if he keeps them up or something like that, he'll get an extension in his contract. So there you go, cobblers fans. Some some breaking news live on the stream. That's what we like to see. Uh, there was pictures of him sort of uh, pictured at the Oldham training ground this afternoon. So Keith Curl is appointed as the new Oldham head coach. So back to Charlton. Um, Normally, when I talk to an opposition fan, I sort of ask how the season's been so far. And then I look at some of their stand-up results. And it seems to either go one or two ways with, with clubs like yourself. Um, you either seem to win against all the top sides. And then the sort of teams that do that are in the playoffs, are in the promotion places. Or you seem to win against kind of teams around you. And then sort of don't do as well against the teams sort of below you. Um, and the teams kind of around us. Because I was looking at kind of results against, you know, the likes of Portsmouth, Lincoln, Sunderland, Hulls, and you've not done too well against them, but you, you've you also lost to the likes of Burton, drawn to Swindon twice. Um, you've drawn with Rochdale, who are near us as well. You've been beaten by Bristol Rovers. Um, talk to us about that. What, why haven't you been able to beat the teams that are lower down in the table and, and give us some confidence as well? <laughs> it's been our thing to be fair it's been it's always been the Charlton thing like even last season in the championship we'd get good results against the top half of the table and then we'd struggle against the bottom but this season it's just been it's just been a bit of a struggle on both ends like obviously Portsmouth smashed us at the Valley recently 3-1 Burton done the double over us bottom of the league obviously at some point but fair play to them Jimmy Ford Asa Bank has done brilliantly for them Drawn twice to Swindon, drew four all with Rochdale, you know, there's some crazy results in there against teams that realistically we should be beaten. But it's 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 the Charlton thing, you know, it's always been the Charlton thing. Struggle against the teams at the bottom, get results at the top. But for whatever reason this season, it's just not going great on both accounts, really. We just like I said earlier, we're just struggling to find the form, we're struggling to uh play good football and struggling to pick up the points. I think Adam Page here was putting a, probably a, a suggestion as to why it's not um, not worked for you against the bottom teams. John Brady said on Saturday afternoon after sort of post match and said all the pressures on Charlton tomorrow night. Nobody is expecting us to come to the Valley big sort of stadium and, and especially for the crowd if there was a crowd and, and win there. So maybe that's you've kind of just crumbled under the pressure of being sort of the big club. I guess that's a factor. I think another factor is probably fans not being allowed in the stadium at the Valley. I think that is a huge, huge factor. I mean, usually we'd be the 12th man. We'd be rallying the, the squad on, but that us not being there is definitely a factor. That's why we're on such a poor run at home. I think it's eight games now at the Valley without a win. I haven't won there since December. So it's really, really bad form. So in honesty, it comes at a perfect time for you to play us, really. It comes as a great time for you guys. Good stuff. That's what we like to hear. Um, I think a lot of... Uh... <laughs> A lot of fans have said that to us recently, especially Portsmouth at the weekend, um, Plymouth last week as well, and we've gone and beaten them, which is good. So hopefully we can make it three on the spin. Um, let's go back to the reverse fixture. Um, you beat us 2-0 back in October. And I was thinking about it. I, I couldn't really remember anything from it. It was probably just a, a standard sort of 2-0 win for you guys. You probably dominated the game. And the fact that I couldn't remember anything probably just shows that it was you know, like I said, a solid professional performance from you guys. What did you make of us in that reverse fixture? Obviously, we were under Keith Curl then. We're not anymore now. But what did you make of the Cobblers in that game? I, I'm trying to remember the game. It's so long ago now. Mm -hmm. I think the first half, you actually looked all right. I think we, we struggled in the first half and you did come forward a couple of times with some good threatening opportunities. But I think in the second half, I think we made a substitution. I can't remember who it was. I think Prattley come on for us. And then we got that goal from the corner and then from then on went on to get the second and commanded the game from then on. But I did think in the first half, you actually looked a decent team and you did look fairly good against us probably because we were so poor. <laughs> like we have been all season, in honesty. Like just performances, as I say, keep saying just not been good but yeah I think maybe maybe the 2-0 scoreline was a little bit flattering for us and potentially probably probably should have been a bit less than that but maybe should even have been a draw but yeah I think I think it was a very tough game but like you said if it was quite a professional performance from us a very grit, uh, gritty performance and we got the job done 
yeah, I think the job done is probably the, the right way to put it. Not the most memorable game we're ever going to yeah. see. So <laughs> I think, yeah, I probably agree with that. Um, so your recent form then, zooming in a bit more on, on to tomorrow night, you obviously, you drew to Oxford last time out, if that's right. Uh, before that, you beat Wigan, who are near us. And before that, you lost 3-0 to Blackpool. Talk us through how you've been playing recently at the minute. Uh, well, me personally, I actually watch none of those games because <laughs> I've, I've been <laughs> taking a break. Uh, I've been taking a break from it all because of how bad it's been. But Blackpool mm. could quite possibly be the worst game of our season by a country mile. You know, we were just we were just awful from what I've heard. We conceded a penalty inside 10 minutes, scored another long range strike, 2-0 um, down at half time. Boya makes a quadruple substitution at half time, but keeps on one of our players who was already on a yellow card. That player gets sent off two minutes later on his 100th appearance for the club as well, which is just typical Darren Brackley. Um, we then give away another penalty, 3 0 down, then get down to nine men. Chucks and EK get sent off, but thank, but that got rescinded. But yeah, it was just an absolute disaster for that game. Wigan, uh, obviously 1 1 0. I didn't watch the game, but from what I, what I was told, it wasn't the greatest performance in the world. We capitalised on a defensive mistake from Wigan. Chucks and EK uh, scored the goal to make it 1-0. Not the greatest performance in the world, but a win's a win. And then Oxford, uh, again, wasn't I didn't hear very good things about the performance. Didn't play very well. Um, before the game, I would have happily have taken a point with the way Oxford have been playing right now. They're obviously in good form under Robinson. And then, as I, I touched upon, 94th minute get a penalty, Ronnie Schwartz steps up, good penalty, hit it well, but a fantastic save from the keeper, last kick of the game and the, the points were shared. So in that sense, rather frustrating to not come away with the win, you know, last kick of the game, you should really be scoring a penalty, but I, I do feel bad for Schwartz because he could do nothing about that. You know, he's hit that really well, it's a good penalty, but the keeper's just pulled off a brilliant save. But yeah, the last two results, Wigan and Oxford, is something to build upon. Usually we'd get a win and then we'd lose and then we go on a bad patch and then we get another winner and nowhere in the cycle We'll just continue this time we've got a win and we've drawn the performance is not great but the results are improving and we're getting there it's just about trying to keep going with those wins and then we kick on from there and try and salvage something from this season cool and you mentioned um, i just want to quickly touch on lee Boyer because you mentioned him a couple of times already in some of the decisions he's made is he quite a is he quite a sudden manager is he someone that's like it's my way or no other way or is am i just reading that completely wrongly but Bo Bowie is an interesting one because he's he's certainly he's divided the Charlton fan base completely. Like it's a complete split. Some people yeah, want to give him time. Yeah, some people want to give him time to rebuild in the summer. Some want him out now, and it, it it's become uh, the the fan base has become quite toxic. But in terms of the, the the decisions he's made, I'll elaborate on that a bit. I think it's just been it's just been down to tactics, really. You know, most time we're just. Most of the time, it's just us smashing the ball long to our striker and just praying. That's what it's been for a very long time. Squad rotation, we've made at least like three or four changes every single game. It's constant rotation. And then sometimes players are playing out of position, like our left back's played on the right. A striker has played right wing back at one point, and he's like five foot four. So just, just some weird decisions. And then the, the post-match interviews have just been the worst like the, out of all of them. Just some of the stuff, scapegoating players saying that he never makes excuses, but he always has an excuse. It's always one thing, you know, <laughs> against, against Fleetwood, we drew nil nil. We blame the wind, even though Fleetwood were playing the same game and seemed to manage perfectly fine without yeah, it. Yeah. It's just been, he always speaks his mind, but it gets him in a lot of trouble. But my, my, in terms of my opinion on Boyer, I think it changes all the time. Like sometimes I think, OK, this season was always going to be a free hit on him. It's a write off from the start. He's never had a rebuild, a proper rebuild for the club. Next season, he'll get the chance to do that with no wage cap and an owner that will back him. But from his performances this season, and I think he has to take a lot of responsibility for the wrong performances this year, I sort of wonder, is he actually the right man to lead us forward anymore? And I've questioned that so many times. And at the moment... I don't think he is. I don't think he is the man to lead us right now. But the truth is, if he is to stay in charge for next season, then he has to be back. It's as simple as that. We have to back him. He gets the rebuild. If come October, November, we're in the position we are in now or even lower and we're nowhere near the playoffs, then he has to go, no question. But, you know, my, my opinion constantly changes. But the, the, we're, just, we're just so split and divided at the moment on Boyer. It's ridiculous. It's, it sounds very similar to how we were on, on Keith Kerr. Obviously, we've now got John Brady and he, he lives here. You know, yeah. he's worked here for years. He's worked in the county all his life, I think. Um, and with Keith Kerr, everybody was very split on him. I was just kind of, if results, if, if the way we're playing gets as results, then fine. Other people were still angry if we were winning, but still playing the same sort of way. And it sounds like Boya kind of plays that similar direct kind of 
or has played it with you this season, that direct kind of start. And then with the press conference thing, Keith Curl was never really spoke his mind, but it was very polit- politician-like answers. You didn't feel like you were getting an yeah. answer from him, which angered him. And I guess that's the same with Bowie, obviously speaking his mind probably a bit too much. Um, yeah. I just want to go on to the danger men then. Um, I've written down Jake foster Casey. Uh, Jaden Stockley, Chuck Zanike, Connor Washington. Obviously, I've just seen that from the squad on your website. Some of them may be injured. There may be others that you want to mention. Who should we look out for tomorrow night as a threat? I think you've hit the nail on the head with most of them there. Jake Forster kaski has been an influence in the middle of that pitch. Absolute commander. He will just run and he, he's just, I think he's levels above the rest of our midfield. To be honest. He's been so good this season. Chuck Zanike is the obvious one. Top scorer, 12 this season. He's been very good, very dominant in the air, very physical and he likes to take on his man. Uh, Jaden Stockley as well, uh, sort of out of favour with Preston when he came to us. I was a bit sceptical because his goal record is not great, but he's got four goals for us already. Again, very dominant in the air. Um, and then Connor Washington as well, seven goals this season. Hasn't scored in a while, but he is a player with with a lot of pace. And I think he will, he can hurt your defence, you know, plays in behind the striker, someone like Aniko or Stockley. We, we like to play the, the big man, little man sort of... Um, strike force with Stockley and Anika and then obviously uh, Washington and Schwartz being the uh, the little men in that. So, yeah, Washington could be a threat. A couple others I could point out. Andrew Shinney uh, as well. Six assists, the most assists this season for us. He's also been very good. Liam Miller, left-hand side, player on loan from Liverpool. Again, with a lot of pace, likes to cut inside on that right foot. And uh, our defender, Rakin Famawo, on loan from Norwich. Six foot three, absolute unit. Very, very, very composed centre-back. Likes to um, hold the ball up and let it roll out for a goal kick. He's very, very composed in that way. And I think he's been absolutely superb this season. And yeah, that's that's about that's about it. To be honest, there's, there's a couple of good names in there, uh, but sort of a best of a bad bunch at the moment. Good stuff, good stuff. So, final one from me then tomorrow night. What kind of game are you expecting? Um, second to last one for me, actually. What kind of game are you expecting? Um, and let's have a score prediction as well. I'm expecting. I'm not, I'm not not expecting much quality in the game. I'm expecting it to be quite a graft, quite a gritty performance from both teams. They'll be going there. It won't be pretty. Obviously, we'll be looking to turn our home form around, finally get a win since the Christmas period. But as I say, we've not been playing very well. So it will be it will be a graft from us. We'll be going out there trying to do something. If we play the long ball tactic, then I can't really see I can't really say I have much confidence with that. But obviously you'll be you'll be looking to continue your good run of form. Dumb Portsmouth four uh, one ridiculous result for you guys. I certainly was not expecting that. Um, you've obviously got to build upon that now. You're I think you're in good form now. Actually out of the bottom four now, so mm-hmm. it's going to be tough. In terms of a score prediction, I think our home form is going to let us down. I think that we'll, we'll probably concede. Knowing us, we love we love conceding the goal at home. But I'm going to go with a one all draw. I'm going to go with a point point uh, point apiece. Good stuff. I think we definitely take that ahead of tomorrow night. Um, yeah. So, are you going to get promoted this season? Then we asked a Portsmouth, Portsmouth fan at the weekend. They said no. What do you think? I'm the same. If I'm honest, I, my answer is no. I just I don't. I think we've missed out on that opportunity. Now we had that good run at the start of the season. Died off completely. We're we're only, we're only four points off, so we're not a mile away. It's just there's we a lot of teams above us have got games in hand, and I think that when they take advantage of that, we'll just be completely out of the picture. But at the start of the season, I didn't expect us to go up anyway. I said it was going to be a rebuild. It was just about keeping the club afloat and then see where we are next season and then go again for the title. But if we get top six, it will certainly be an achievement, but I don't think we'll get anywhere with it with the squad that we currently have. But I don't think this season's our season. I think next year is where it's at. Good stuff. So hopefully next season, the addicts back in the championship, that'll be uh, nice to see. Um, obviously, I found you through your YouTube channel. You mentioned you were taking a break. Can we still find you? Are you still going to be uploading? Or tell, Yeah, tell I should still be... You. I should still be by uh, this week, hopefully. Should go, hopefully be back to watching the games. But yeah, my channel is Tyler Rowlandson. My name, as you can see, oh, there. There it is there on the screen. Somewhere, Somewhere yeah. just, which is my name. Just fell yeah. it there. Um, but yeah, would appreciate it if you uh, took a look. Uh, Charlton content creator uh, approaching 3,000 subscribers. If we get to that, that'd be awesome. And uh, yeah. Good stuff. So go and make sure you look at Tyler's uh, channel after the stream's finished. I'll, I'll drop a link in the description um, as well. There's a big question coming in the chat. Uh, Lucy has asked, uh, where's the beard gone? I've got rid of it. 
<laughs> um, <laughs> I, I was just admit, going back to going back into school tomorrow. I didn't want to be centre of attention. I've been yeah, oh, you've grown a beard, you've grown a beard. Yeah, great. <laughs> so yeah, I got rid of it, um, and I feel much better, and I think look much better as well without it. So it's never coming back. Um, so yeah, thanks very much to everybody for joining in. Um, just a final thank you, uh, scrolling across the bottom as well to our patron supporters, Luke NTFC, Jason Rodhouse, Adam Page, Mike Fuller, and Dan Wiseman. Thank you very much to you five uh, for supporting us on Patreon. If you do want to do that from just two pounds a month, go and hit the link in the description. So thanks very much to Tyler for coming on. Hopefully the cobblers can go and get a win tomorrow night. Make sure to leave a like on the stream or if you're watching it back as a video, please do hit thumbs up and hit subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, we will see you later. Bye bye.